Now it's my pleasure to introduce Tigit Kasahun. She is a practicing professional architect and urbanist in Ethiopia. She is a Fulbright Hubert H. Humphrey Research Fellow at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States. She is a lecturer in research at Addis Ababa University and the National Program Officer for UN Habitat Ethiopia. Her work addresses national and international issues in human settlement. Her current work looks at how to mainstream and empower women in design by looking at the role of gender in spatial planning for equitably inclusive city design. Um, thank you, Robin, and uh, good morning all. So my design, my design and research project is titled Gender and Space. Gender and Space, the role of city design for an equitably inclusive development. So you may ask why this project here in Cody. And in RIF, my story is that I studied and worked in the male dominated environment, architecture and urban planning, which is also considered to be a man's job in most parts of the world. So I always thought that I had to be and act like a man just to be accepted and be successful in our work environment. But then I started thinking that it's kind of okay to be a woman and not always try to prove yourself that you can do it. So the hazardous question for me was then how? That was why I applied and came here in 2014 to learn how the gender activists would reply to these questions and how they made it so far. So I came to Cody for the Women Community Development Leadership training and was inspired enough by the successful women that I met. We changed my mindset and proved that it's indeed okay to be a woman and still get where you want to get to be. In reality, it's indeed a bit challenging and you may need to be always one step ahead, but I would say it's doable. So I started thinking on how to integrate a gender sensitive design approach in my work and how to advocate in bringing more women in this field to have an equal representation and bring about gender sensitive outputs in our professional field. So then I started this design and research project that tries to show how cities design approach to a gender lens will bring a shift from the existing inclusive inequalities to equitable inclusiveness in physical spaces in order to have fair cities and sustainable development. So to start with, I limited its focus on women and see the impact of city spatial design on women's development and then to expand the impact of knowledge and skills in achieving gender equity through city design. So gender equity exists in various forms and in various forms as in conflicts, politics, law, culture, religion, education, transportation, but spatial planning and design of physical spaces can be a tool that mediates and can serve as cross-cutting factor that can address these different issues. So what do I mean by physical spaces in addressing this issue? I divided it only into categories that I think it's be it best describes it. So the first one being spaces that we practice inequalities, which will result into spaces for inequalities. It can also be the vice versa as one is dependent on the other one. So the first one can be interpreted as spaces, as institutions that women get their educational and professional experience. And the second one are spaces that are shaped and designed as places, private public spaces, cities, countries, urban areas. So is the design of such physical spaces really important in bringing an, an equitably inclusive development for women is the question. And the answer can, is yes, these spaces mediate the educational, professional, social, and economic attainment of women. And if they're not designed through a gender lens, they will result into inclusive development as we may find everywhere but in a very unequal way. So how are this design of these physical spaces became major challenges and problems, especially for women not to not equally benefit from the current socioeconomic development that is taking place. So let me give you some examples for both cases based on my experience in my country. So in the first case, I can give you three examples. In the university that I teach, which is a school of architecture and urban planning, there are less female architects enrollment and the majority of dropouts are female students. As a result, there are less women in this field, less gender sensitive curriculum and structure of organization. Women are less associated or experience spaces in the built environment. Due to the safety in traditional norms and domestic gender roles, we are expected to stay at home. 
So we fell in trans exams for a university that focus on how you describe and articulate a space in our cities. Women are time poor. The extra domestic burden makes us excel in our education and will be less will be, be less competent to find jobs. As a result, women will still will not have leadership and decision making positions, which will then highly influence my second point, that is physical spaces will end up being planned, designed, developed, and redeveloped by not seeing them through a gender lens, resulting into spaces for inequalities, which means places, infrastructure that are shaped and built, but fail to equally provide the necessary benefits for women from the available opportunities and resources. Therefore, we, we uh, need to pay, attentions, to pay attention to the clear and deniable differences between women and men that require gender sensitive interventions in designing and shaping places. That is, to promote equal access to work and study and other growing opportunities, there should be close proximity between the main socioeconomic infrastructure and neighborhood. Transportation, efficient road networks should be user friendly and route optimized. Safety and security should be improved by providing adequate street illumination and signage. So this benefits everyone, but often of a greater importance to women than men. So as an example, if I take my city at Ababa, which is the capital city of Ethiopia, it is the political capital of Africa, seat of African Union, and the second city to host the largest number of embassies next to New York. So due to this rapid urbanization and construction boom that is needed, the urban poor are being moved out from the inner city into new settlements into the outskirts of the city, which is almost 20 kilometers away from the city center where the major socioeconomic infrastructure are located. So the new built up physical spaces and new transport infrastructure spatially segregated the urban landscape. They wash away the, the, pub, the small public spaces and econ informal economics where most women make their living on. It's, did not consider women's safety and mobility needs. So it limited their opportunities and choices to equally benefit and engage from the socioeconomic development of the country. So when we see it in a major city scale, the university and city relationship on the left, you can see the settlement in gray and the location of the universities in black, which are, which are like how far and off roads the universities can be. So in addition, you can also see in the pictures, the industrial parks as they are, the main economic drivers for employment generation and poverty alleviation. So you can see their location, their proximity to the city center, transportation. So women, it's hard for women to access and be part of this institution, thus not equally benefit from them. So what is gender sensitive design and planning of physical spaces? And they can start from small, for example, it can start from toilet door hangers for bags, parking spaces for pregnant women, as well as vibrant public spaces and streets. And it can go to the city scale to design polycentric cities with mixed use development and monocentric ones. Such equitable and inclusive city design intervention brings a difference into women's life. It gives them socioeconomic empowerment because they will be equally part of and benefit from the development of the economies. Therefore, therefore more women need you know, to be part of planning and design process they need to be in position to make decisions that would ensure gender sensitive special planning leading to equality in equ equitably inclusive development. So I advocate for participatory design and all planners designers should seek input for women. But by creating spaces that, make it, that makes it easier for women to fulfill both their family and professional work related mm -hmm. obligation, I don't inadvertently validate conventional gender expectation that women must do all the work. Therefore, my vision is to frame a project proposal to initiate university courses and graduate women association that will mainstream, engage, learn, teach and practice and empower more women students and professional women into the field of architecture and planning to have a gender sensitive, equitable places. So figuring out the best way to achieve gender equity in space is a work in progress. Gender sensitive city design and spatial planning are essential as communities grow. The need of redefining equality and promoting an understanding in this concept does not require elimination of diversity or build segregation of women for men. Planning with women in mind will ensure that the needs of multiple groups are met. So indeed, safe, equitable, inclusive, and fair cities should be for everyone. But gender sensitive planning will provide better places to live for everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tigis.